The other approach for part E is to say the torque is equal to uh, I, omega, uh, I alpha, right? And uh, to get alpha from that, and we, can, we could do the magnitude of the torque is uh, the magnitude. So we could do it in magnitude format. So we get the magnitude of the torque, and uh, this is 63.3. So what was the uh, what was the torque? Oh, I have it right here, huh? Three fifths. So we get uh, this will be three fifths square root of one plus 16 squared plus uh, 26 squared is equal to. 63.3 times magnitude of alpha, right? So that gives us the, the radians per second squared, the angular uh, acceleration. The angular acceleration comes out to be point this is the magnitude of the angular acceleration, point two nine rads per second squared. Then once we get that, we can use linear uh, rotational kinematics. We can say omega final is omega initial plus alpha t because alpha is constant. We're assuming the torque is constant, so if alpha is constant, we can use the first equation. So we take the alpha that we got, and we multiply it by six seconds. One point seven four. which is the other, same as the other answer, right? So I like this problem because it helps to illustrate a lot of stuff. It helps to show how to get the I. It helps to show how to get the angle between two, any two vectors. Uh, it helps to show how to do the cross product for the torque. It helps to show the relationship between torque and angular momentum. Torque uh, is the rate of change of angular momentum. And it helps to show the illustrate this equation, L is I omega. Okay? Uh, so there's a lot of good stuff in there. It kind of brings a lot of things together, you know? Okay, now let's.